In this video, we're learning how to solve one-step equations. And if you look at the top of the screen, we're going to see some tips to use when we're solving one-step equations. So the top of our screen says, solve one-step equations by using inverse or opposite operations. Remember, anything you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. So those tips are going to make more sense once we actually do some problems. So let's start with example one. In example one, we have x plus 10 is equal to 30. When we're solving one-step equations, our goal is to get the variable by itself. So we're trying to get this x by itself. In order to do that, we have to get rid of this plus 10 on the left side of the equation. And that's where this first tip is going to come in handy. We have to use inverse or opposite operations. So we're adding 10 to x. The inverse or opposite of addition is subtraction. So what we want to do is we're going to take our equation, we have x plus 10, and we want to subtract 10 from the left side of the equation, again, because subtraction is the inverse of addition. And on the right side, we're going to have 30. And now this is where our second tip comes in handy. It says anything you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. So because we subtracted 10 from the left side, we have to subtract 10 from the right side to keep the equation balanced. And now what's going to happen is we have plus 10 and minus 10. Positive 10 and negative 10 are opposites, so when we combine them together, they just go to 0. So we're left with an x on the left side of the equation, which is our goal to get the x by itself. And on the right side, 30 minus 10 is equal to 20. So we get that x is equal to 20. The cool thing about solving equations is that we can always check our answer. So I'll show you guys how we can check our answer down here. So to check our answer, we're going to take our original equation, but instead of x plus 10 equals 30, we want to plug in the answer that we got for x into the equation. So we're going to say 20 plus 10 equals 30, and we want to make sure that both sides of the equation end up equal when we plug in our answer for the variable. So 20 plus 10 is equal to 30, so we get 30 on the left, we get 30 on the right, 30 is equal to 30, so we know that our answer, x equals 20, is correct. Let's take a look at another example. So in example 2, we have a minus 17 is equal to 12. So this time, we're subtracting 17 from a. So again, to get rid of this minus 17, we have to do the inverse operation. So we have a minus 17. The inverse of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add 17 to the left side of our equation. And then remember, anything we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we have to add 17 to the right side of our equation. And when we subtract 17 and add 17, those just go to 0. So we're going to be left with an a on the left side of our equation. On the right side, 12 plus 17 is going to give us 29. So we get that a is equal to 29. And again, we're going to check our work. So instead of saying a minus 17 equals 12, we want to take our answer of 29, plug that in for a. So we're going to have 29 minus 17 equals 12, and we want to check if both sides of the equation are equal. 29 minus 17 is equal to 12, so we get 12 equals 12, which is a true statement. So our answer of a equals 29 is correct. Now we're going to take a look at some examples using multiplication and division. So example 3 is 6m equals 48. And remember, when we have a number next to a variable, that just means multiplication. So this can be read as 6 times m is equal to 48. And we're going to use the same strategy we used in the last two problems. So we're multiplying m by 6. So to get rid of the 6, we have to do the inverse operation. The inverse of multiplication is division. So we need to divide the left side of our equation by 6. Anything we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we have to divide the right side of our equation by 6. And now on the left side, 6m over 6, what's going to happen is 6 divided by 6 is 1. So we're left with a 1, and we're left with an m. And on the right side, 48 divided by 6 is going to give us 8. And then 1m is just the same as m. 
so you actually don't need the 1 there. So we just get that m is equal to 8. And now, of course, we want to check our answer. So I'm going to check it over here. And we're going to check our answer the same way that we did for examples 1 and 2. So instead of an m in our original equation, we want to replace it with the answer that we got of 8. So we're going to do 6 times 8 is equal to 48. And we want to make sure that both sides of our equation are equal when we plug in our answer for the variable. So 6 times 8 is 48. So we get that 48 is equal to 48. Both sides of our equation are equal. So our answer of m equals 8 is correct. Now we're going to take a look at example 4, which involves division. So we have k divided by 3 is equal to 9. I'm going to rewrite our equation using a fraction. So I'm going to say k over 3 is equal to 9. So remember that if I divide something by a number, so k divided by 3, that's just the same as putting k over 3. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I think it'll be easier to visually show you guys what's going on. So we have k divided by 3 is equal to 9. So we are dividing k by 3. So to get rid of the 3, we have to do the inverse operation. The inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the left side of my equation by 3. Anything I do to the left side, I have to do to the right side. So I'm going to multiply the right side by 3. And on the left side, I'm just going to turn this into 3 over 1. So now we're multiplying two fractions. And what happens is when we multiply 3 over 1 times k over 3, these 3's go away, and we're just left with k over 1. And on the right side, 9 times 3 is 27. And anything divided by 1 is just itself, so we don't actually need that 1 there. So we actually just have k is equal to 27. And now, of course, we want to check our work. So we're going to check our work over here. We're going to take our answer of 27, plug it into our original equation. So we're going to have 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So we get that 9 equals 9, which is a true statement. So our answer of k equals 27 is correct. Let's take a look at two more examples. So for our last two examples, I encourage you guys to pause the video and try them on your own, and then come back to the video and watch me solve them to make sure that you get the correct answers. So let's go through number five. So we have p plus 24 is equal to 32. So we're adding 24 to p. So to get the p by itself, we need to do the inverse operation, which is subtraction. So we're going to subtract 24 from the left side of our equation. Anything we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we have to subtract 24 from the right. On the left side, a positive 24 and a negative 24 are opposites, so it's just going to go to 0. So we're left with a p. On the right side, 32 minus 24 is 8. So we get that p is equal to 8. And don't forget to check your answer. So we're going to plug in 8 for p into our equation. So we have 8 plus 24 is equal to 32. 8 plus 24 is 32. So we get that 32 is equal to 32, which is a true statement. So our answer of p equals 8 is correct. For our final example, we have h over 5 equals 15, which is the same as h divided by 5 is 15. So I'm going to rewrite it so I have more space. So I have h over 5 equals 15. I'm dividing h by 5, so to get the h by itself, I have to do the inverse of division, which is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 5, which is just 5 over 1. Anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So multiply the right side by 5. When I multiply 5 over 1 times h over 5, the 5's go away. I'm left with h over 1, which is just h. On the right side, 15 times 5 is going to give us 75. So I get that h is equal to 75. And now my last step is just to check my answer. So let's replace the h in our equation with our answer of 75. So we want to see if 75 over 5 is equal to 15. And I'm going to bring it over here because I ran out of space. 75 divided by 5 is 15. So I get 15 is equal to 15. Both sides of my equation are the same. So I know that my answer of h equals 75 is correct. 
So just to recap, when you're solving one-step equations, you want to remember to use inverse or opposite operations to get the variable by itself. You have to remember that anything you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. And don't forget to check your work by plugging in your answer for the variable and verifying that both sides of the equation are the same.